So welcome to our experimental demonstration part. That is our experiment number six, the rotational dynamics. So this is actually the rotational dynamics apparatus, or you can say it's the rotational dynamic unit. Now, using this unit, we can perform many experiments, but our experiment is to study the angular velocity of some disks. So, this is the base plate. This is the display screen, uh, and it gives the counts per second of the black strips, uh, as you can see on this aluminium disk or steel disk. So, we, so one is the uh, aluminium disk, and two are the steel disks. So, as we discussed that we are uh, we always use this setup in two uh, disks. So, the unit should always be operated. In two disks. So I said that there are two disks, and two disk. One is the aluminium disk, and two are the steel disk. So we will find their angular velocity one by one. In the first case, we will find the angular velocity of the aluminium disk, and in the second case, we will find the uh, angular velocity of the steel disk. Keep in mind that there is a third disk, uh, and and on one side it is written that this side must be down. So this is actually a 16 mm hole. So keep in mind that this is our base plate and this is the spindle having holes in it. So this this disc should always be at the bottom uh, of the discs. So first we will place the this side down on the spindle. This is the first disc, and now if you are studying the angular velocity of the aluminium disc or the steel disc, so first we will just study the angular velocity of the aluminium disc. So how to do it? We will then keep the aluminium disc on the top of the spindle. So this unit should always be operated in two discs. Keep in mind. So now we know that there is an air tube, uh, and the air is provided by the air compressor. The air goes inside this tube and comes out of this spindle, as we uh, discussed. So the, this spindle gives the. Let me show you. So as you can see, that this spindle is having some holes in it. So actually, the air comes out of these holes. So on the top of it, we place the disc. So the steel disc is always this one. The disc with this mark uh, is always on the bottom. Keep this disc on the spindle, and the second disc is this, the aluminium disc with the mark should be on the top. Keep in mind that this mark should be above. So this is our second disc. So this is our display screen, and it counts actually. The number of black bars when the when this disc is rotating, this display screen counts the number of black bars per second. So here it is written that it counts. So the so the unit is counts per second. So the unit is counts per second, and the display screen will tell you that let's say the counts per second are let's say 240 counts per second, 10 counts per second, and keep in mind the value should always be between 100 hertz and 700 hertz. So this is actually the range in which this display screen counts. So the value is reliable between 100 to 700 hertz. And this is actually the switch we, which we were talking about. So if we we will always operate this uh, system in the upper mode. So we will flip this switch to the upper mode when this system is operated. Here we have two valves. So for this experiment, one valve should be at the center of the spindle, and the other valve, as we discussed, that it should be at the holes and it should be at the valve pin storage so keep in mind there are three positions one the two the first two are the valve pin storage and the the bottom one is the bottom disc valve so keep in mind when you will place this uh, this valve pin in the center what it will do it will keep the second disc the bottom one this disc on the base plate fixed or you can say that This disc will not rotate when this disc is freely rotating above its surface. So this disc, we want this disc to be at rest. So what we will do, we will place the one valve pin at this position, valve pin position. So this means that this disc will be fixed and the top disc will be uh, rotated above the spindle. And this valve pin is for the purpose that the air actually comes out of the spindle. So in order to uniformly distribute that air to these disc, we will place one of the valve pin. at the top of the spindle so this is actually the apparatus uh, for this experiment uh, this is the, the rotational dynamics system and this is the display counter it tells us the number of counts per second these are our two disks the disk the system is always operated in two disks the, we will be using this system in the upper mode once 
one spin well will be at the center of the spindle and the other spin well will be at the center of these holes at the well pin storage position keep in mind so let's proceed with our experiment how to do it so the first thing you need to know is to turn on the air compressor uh, at the other end of this slab you are having an air compressor and that air compressor uh, actually provides the air to four of the these units so there are four workstation actually in this slab and the air compressor provides the air to all of the four units so what we will do we will keep on the air compressor so the air compressor actually provides the air and the air is provided to this unit through this gas pipe and this is the gas well so keep in mind whenever you are operating this unit you should not be rotating these discs against each other when the air compressor is not turned on or when this valve is in the off mode keep in mind so if now this is uh, is in the off mode so if i will rotate the first disc on the second definitely there will be some friction and that friction will be responsible to reduce the angular velocity when this system is operated so keep in mind we will turn on this valve so you will not turn this valve directly so if you will turn it on directly what will happen the pressure is too high that it will either break these tubes or it will damage the tubes that goes inside this system so you have to take care of these things before performing this experiment so the valve pin should be such that this is very important keep in mind that the valve you should turn on the valve very gently and very slowly so keep it fixed let's say at this position the air is enough to give the upper disc enough velocity the give the upper disc enough po force to rotate freely so if this at this position the air pressure is such that it can rotate this disc freely when you rotate it gently by your finger now then you can use this value so in your manual it is written that the pressure should be 9 pound square per inch so if you do not have the so if it's not working for the 9 psi you can do it for any of the value but keep in mind the value should be fixed and moderate when you keep it at some position you will not be disturbing it for the rest of the experiment now keep in mind when you will start this experiment first you will turn on the air well so keep it at fixed and moderate keep the pressure fixed and moderate so turn the air well such that so i think this is uh, enough to rotate the first disc freely so if i rotate it gently with my finger you can see that it's it's freely rotating above the top disc so this is actually the the pressure should be fixed and moderate throughout the experiment now the second thing is if i remove this valve and keep it at the second position then you will notice that the second disc will always start rotating so it's free to rotate but if i will remove the this pin you see that this stop this disc stops rotating so i will keep this disc in the valve position and what will happen this disc will not rotate when i will be measuring the angular velocity of the top disc so this is actually the purpose of this pin and this is actually the purpose of the spin well so you will have to keep this so the air is the air comes out and we don't want this the air should be uniformly distributed so that this disc rotate freely on the top of the bottom disc so i will keep one of the valve pin in the spindle this so this before performing this experiment this is the first step turn on the air well now the second thing is to so the second thing is you will be using a stopwatch so either you can use a stopwatch provided to you in the lab or or also you can use your phone the stopwatch that comes in your phone so you can use that stopwatch as well but so there are two optical readers as i discussed there are two optical readers so the first optical reader reads the number of black bars of this black disc and the second the second optical reader reads the number of black bars of this second disc so there are two optical readers now if the switch is to is in the upper position now if this disc is rotated it will monitor the first disc the number of counts of the first disc so this display screen so it's showing that 144 counts per second now it's showing that 143 counts per second so keep in mind it tells us the number of counts the number of black bars per second of the first disc because the switch is in the upper mode so this is actually the function of this switch 
and this is actually the it will tell it will gives us gives us the value of r i and r f now how to note your readings first you will be using your stopwatch so for the initial reading you will first rotate the top disk gently by your finger like this now this display screen will tell you the first value 117 and keep in mind let me repeat the value should be between 100 counts per second to 700 counts per second so rotate it so that it gives you a value of it uh, between 100 and 700 hertz so let me rotate it gently by, with my finger so the first value it gives is 231 and the second is 229 so we will note that value the first ri value is 229 counts per second so the value of ri will be 229 let me note this value R i is our 229 counts per second. The display screen is showing that the R i after 2 seconds when I gently rotate this. So keep in mind you should always be using the second value because the display screen is updated every second, every 2 seconds. So when you rotate it gently by your finger, note the second value right after the first value. So this will be the accurate value actually. Now the disk will be rotating throughout the experiment. Now, how to note the second, the RF value, as we know, you can see in the table that we will need RF n theta and uh, R average and then we will have to calculate the kappa or the k value. So, how to note the RF value, you will need a stopwatch. Now, you know that this tape is rotating above, so we will first fix its position anywhere you want. Now, when I will count the number of 10 revolutions for this disk. So how to do it? Let's say that is that I will keep this initial position to be here. So if the tape starts at here and it comes back to this position, it will be one revolution. So how to turn on your stopwatch? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop the stopwatch. Now. The display screen will tell you again the value 140. So this will be your RF value. The RF value is to 140 counts per second. Now keep in mind, let me repeat this. Let me repeat this experiment. What, what we did? So what is the procedure? You will turn on the ear well, then you will rotate this disc gently with your finger like this. So there is this display screen will tell you the value first value. So note the second value right after the first value. So the first value was 198 and the second value it gives is 194. So for the first experiment, uh, the RI value is let's say 194. Now the disk is rotating. Now note the position of this tape anywhere you want. So let's say it starts at this position. So you will use a stopwatch to count the number of 10 revolutions. We are performing this experiment for 10 revolutions. So let's say. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, this is your T and the value it gives is 242. So, RF is 242. Keep in mind. So, this is the way how to do it. RI is the initial value of this display screen. When you rotate, rotate the first is gently by your finger, it will give you initially the first value. So, do not use that value, the value right after the first value because this display screen is continuously giving us the value and the value is continuously decreasing 215, 214, 211, 209. So, the value is decreasing because the disk is decelerating because of environmental factors. So, keep in mind RI is the initial value that the display screen gives when I rotate it gently with my finger. So in the first part I said that start the stopwatch and the disc at the same time. So this is not necessary. For more accuracy you will rotate the disc gently with your finger and then note the do not note the first reading. Do not note the first reading. Note the reading right after the first reading will be the accurate value of your RI. RI is actually the counts per second of the first disc. Now you will note the number of revolutions. 10 revolutions for the first disc. So let's say I am taking this point. So if it starts at this point and it comes at again to this point, this will be one revolution. Let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is actually, so you will note 10 revolutions time t and you will record that time in your 
table as we discussed. Now, as you turn off your, as you turn, as you stop your timer, keep in mind, after 10 revolutions, at the 10th revolution, as you stop your timer, the display screen will again give you a value. So, note the second value, leave the first value and note the second value as you stop your timer. This will be the value of RF. So, actually RF is the value after when you stop your timer and RI was the initial value when you turn it with your finger. So, you will note that value down. Now, keep in mind, then you will calculate the theta and theta was actually equal to theta is equal to 2 pi and we have discussed this in very detail. So, theta was equal to 2 pi n radians. Then you will calculate the k average velocity, the average velocity, the r average. r average was the initial reading and the final reading average. Then you will k. Uh, we know we know that kappa omega average is equal to kappa r average is equal to omega average. So you will calculate the ratio and you will get a constant value of the kappa, which was 0 0.033 uh, radian per bar, radians per bar. So this is the way how to perform this experiment. Now keep in mind. You will note all the values, you will fill the entire table in one go. You will not be doing this, for, let's say for the first value, you record this value and then you stop this disk. And then for the second value, you will again st start rotating this disk. So this is not the way. In the first go, keep in mind, you will perform all of the trials in the first go. So when you rotate this disk, you will note the RI, then you will count the number of evolutions, the time when you stop your stopwatch, you will note the RF value, then for the second case, again you will note the RI value, the RF, this will be your second case, then you will again note the RI, the RF, theta, calculate the K value, omega average, R average. So you will be doing this, so you will record at least 10 to 11 trials. So this is for actually for the case of aluminum disc. Now for the second case, what you will do, you will stop this disc again, remove this pin, Turn off air well, remove this disc, keep in mind, and now keep the steel disc. So, all having the same radii on the top of the head. So, now we will be actually, now we will actually be plotting, now we will be actually measuring the angular velocity of this steel disc actually. So, again keep the spindle, keep the valve pin right in the middle of the spindle, turn on the air valve. Turn on the air valve and rotate the disc slowly again. So again you will have to repeat this the same procedure for the steel disc now and the, the switch will be in always in the upper position. Valve pins will be one will, will be in the valve pin will be in their appropriate positions. One will be in the middle of the spindle and the other one will be in the storage valve position right between the three holes. So now, now at the end you will calculate the percentage difference between the k value, so we discussed this in very detail in our first part that one value of k is calculated via the theoretical value that is equal to 2 pi by n, where n is the number of Blake strips on this aluminum or steel disc. So there are actually 200 Blake bars and 200 white bars on this disc. So you will perform this experiment for, you perform this experiment for the uh, steel disc as well. Now at the end, you will calculate the percentage difference between the uh, theoretical value of k and the average calculated value of k. So we have discussed this, you should go through the first part to understand how to uh, fill the table. So this was actually the experimental demonstration of this setup. Now at the end, you will plot a graph between the uh, angular velocity, the angu average angular velocity and the time. So you will plot a graph between the aluminum disc and the steel disc. So definitely you, the disc are decelerating with respect to time. So because the counter value is not constant, when I rotate the first disc, the counter values continuously decreases. It means that the disc is decelerating. So for the for both the cases. Now which disc will come to rest more quickly? Which disc will come to rest more quickly? So you will plot a graph and definitely you will get two curves. So it means that the, the first, the disc with the lower mass aluminum disc, it will come more quickly to its stretch position because of its lower mass and the steel disc will come to rest comparatively to the comparatively slower to the first disc, that is the aluminum disc. This was actually the experiment number 6, rotational dynamics. 
So this was all about our today's experimental part. Thank you so very much for watching the lectures.